Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. Recently, I finished this pair of Thickmas socks by Summer Lee that I knit in completely undyed yarn and then dyed them myself when they were totally finished. This has been sort of a dream project of mine and I've been so happy with how this worked out. So I wanted to share the whole process with you because it was so much fun. So the idea to do a project like this started way back in 2019 when I was sort of dabbling in dyeing yarn. I played around with it a little bit and really enjoyed the creative aspect of it, but I also realized really quickly that it wasn't for me. But I still always wanted to do a project like this. Because I don't really love dyeing yarn, I sort of put the idea aside until the end of last year. I was knitting some Thickmas socks by Summer Lee. That pattern is a pattern set that includes a bunch of different variations, including a reverse stockinette sock, which is also something I've always wanted to do. And I thought it would be really fun to do those reverse stockinette socks and dye them. I thought this was the perfect pattern for this project because the socks are knit holding fingering weight yarn double. I knew because they were gonna knit up fairly quickly that if the project all just went awry, I wasn't gonna lose a lot of time and I could just over dye the socks at the end to rescue them. So when I finished the socks, I grabbed all of my dyeing equipment and my acid dyes out of the closet and I got started. The main things that I needed to dye these socks were a large stainless steel stock pot, a pair of tongs and a stainless steel spoon, a milk frother to make sure that my acid dyes are mixed evenly in my water, the acid dyes themselves, and some citric acid. Because the acid dyes are toxic, you also need a mask. And I had this N95 mask that I purchased from 2019 and already had sitting in the closet ready to go. All the equipment I used is exclusive to yarn dyeing. You don't wanna use anything that you're using to dye yarn with acid dyes with anything that you're gonna eat. It's just not healthy, so I use all this stuff only to dye yarn. When you're dyeing with acid dyes, it's necessary to use an acid to get the dye to actually bond to the fibers of the yarn. So the first thing that I did was put some citric acid in water and just let the socks soak in there for a while so that whenever it came time to dye them, they were ready to have the dye really bond to the fibers. You can also use vinegar for this, but I always just use citric acid because then you don't have that vinegar smell. And whenever I do this, I generally let the fibers sit in that water soaking up that citric acid and water for like 30 minutes. That may or may not be the right amount of time, but that's always sort of worked for me. So when that time had elapsed, I then took the socks out of the water because I was just soaking them in that stock pot with the water that I was going to use to dye them. And I put it on the stove and brought it up to a boil. You don't actually want to dye in that boiling water. And I'm sure there's like an optimal temperature, but I just bring the water up to a boil, then turn it down a little so the boiling stops. And then that's when I get started with the actual dyeing portion. In the past, whenever I was dyeing yarn, I was trying to recreate colors that I found online using their CMYK values, which are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So I would use those colors of dye and mix them in ratios that would end up with whatever color I was trying to achieve. I didn't want to do all of that here because you start getting into having to measure your dye and get things exact. And I really just wanted to have fun with this process and get rid of any of that like needing to be perfect. So I just was gonna use cyan and dye these socks, but I realized as soon as I pulled all the dyes out that I actually have salmon dye. So I thought that would be really beautiful on these socks. So because I didn't want to have to worry about being exact with this process, I just used these really small measuring spoons that I had and added what amounted to a random amount of dye and just figured it would work out. So once I added that dye to the water, I used a milk frother to just make sure that the dye was really evenly incorporated into the water. And then once the dye was ready, I just started dipping the socks. I started out by holding the toe in the water for like a little bit of time. And then I just started lifting the socks out of the water and dipping them in over and over. And over time, I gradually increased the depth at which I dipped the socks in. My theory here was that by doing this, the toe and the bottom part of the sock would spend the most amount of time in the dye. And with the acid that I had put in the water, I did put a little bit more when I started actually dyeing. I was hoping that the dye would really strike or stick to the fibers on the toe in like a greater amount so they would be darker. And then as I went up to the cuff, it would get lighter and lighter. At the end, I sort of just dropped the sock in and there was still enough dye in the water that I didn't achieve a gradient that I was really satisfied with. 
So after I finished with the initial round of salmon dye, I decided I was gonna add a little bit more salmon and a little bit of black to the water and then dip dye them again. So essentially I was over dyeing them with just a darker salmon color. So my hope was that they would soak up all the dye before it was time to sort of drop the whole sock in and let it sit in the hot water and make sure that that fiber and the dye really bonded to each other. So at the end of that second dip dyeing with the salmon and the black dye, I was really happy with how the contrast was looking on the wet socks. So I threw a skein of undyed yarn in the pot. Then after I had thrown that undyed skein in and I was ready to let the socks sit in the water and make sure that the, the binding of the dye to the fibers like completely finished, I just turned the flame off and let the socks and the yarn sit in that hot water until it came down to room temperature. Once the water was room temperature, I just took the socks out and I did exactly what I would do if I normally wet blocked socks. I threw them on a towel, rolled it up, and stepped on it to make sure all the water was out. Then I put the socks on my sock blockers and I hung them up so they could sit there to dry. I was already really excited looking at them on the sock blockers because the gradient looked so beautiful. And at that point, I got really excited to see how they would look when they were dry. The next day, they were all dry and ready to go. And I put them on my feet and I cannot tell you how excited I was because this project had been in my mind since 2019, though I didn't realize I was gonna do socks. It was so exciting to put these socks on and to see how good they looked. And because these socks are knit holding two strands of fingering weight yarn double, they're just so thick and cozy and they're perfect for this really cold Chicago winter. So that was an extra bonus. Every single thing about this project just made me so happy. They were the perfect knit while I was sitting and watching TV and relaxing. The dyeing was in the end really simple and the finished result just, I could not be more pleased with. So I just love this pair of socks and I'm so excited I got to show them to all of you. If you've ever dreamed up a project that kind of was in the back of your mind for a long time and then finally did it, I would love to hear all about it. So head down to the comment section and let me know what those dream projects were for you. And while you're down there, be sure you hit the little like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so that you'll be notified whenever I post new knitting and yarn related videos. I had so much fun knitting this project, dyeing it and sharing it with all of you. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.